Uh, moving on to fourth in the constructors, shall we? And Honda, um, and let's go with LCR Honda, first of all. Seventh in the teams, a best result of fourth. Alex Marquez, the best, uh, achieving that best in the Algarve. Close to a podium, which wasn't too shabby. Nakagami, also a best of fourth uh, in Spain. But I think we spoke a lot about this. Fairly incident prone and threw away a lot of potentially good results, which seems to be a sort of case of, of Nakagami's past few seasons. Keith, uh, Honda, though, in trouble a bit. Yeah, they've been in trouble really for a few years. I, I mean, it's, I mean, all their eggs were in the basket of Mark Marquez for so long. I think that, that you know, after Mark's arm in, injury, they've obviously had to start listening to other riders and start moving things around. I mean, we can go back to our own Cal Crutchlow. You know, Cal was a guy that would ride a you know, garden gate effectively and make it work because he was a tough character that could work his way around it. But, you know, Alex Marquez isn't his brother. Um, Takanakagami, well, is it fair to say that if it wasn't for nationality, he might not still be where he is? You know, he shows those flashes of brilliance, but right now people are looking at, you know, those flashes of brilliantly, brilliance in a more consistent manner. And Taka hasn't really managed to do that quite as well as maybe he should be doing at this time in his MotoGP career. Um, having said that, I'm a fan of Nak Nakagami. And again, if I refer to Cal Crutzo, Cal Crutzo, when Nakagami first came into MotoGP, said, this guy is going to be fast. Um, you know, and, and when you're another you're, you're rider and you're riding with someone as a teammate, you see things that we can't when we're watching him from the telly. So, you know, perhaps... Next year will be Nakagami's year. There are cleverer people than me that are, that are making these decisions on the ground, in the paddock, that are seeing, seeing what Nakagami is doing with the tools he's got. But you're right about Honda. Honda have been in a little bit of trouble right the way through the factory team through to LCR, Lucio Cecinello's team. And Lucio is is similar, in my view, to to, to the Tectoire guys of, of Coulon and Poncherel in that he's brilliant. He understands. He's died in the war. He understands everything there is to understand about motorbike racing. He's been there and done it quite literally. Um, but again, the team perhaps, you know, haven't quite come up to expectations. <laughs> Has any Honda? <laughs> no. Nakagami's one of those guys that you think if he could just get that podium, maybe it would be the turning point. But you just worry that... The pressure is building on him, and it's it, and it's getting to him, isn't it? That that he 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 gets near being able to fight for the podium, and then it, it doesn't happen. And I think the setbacks are adding up. And it, I, I you know he needs to. He hasn't. Both riders, Alex and Nakagami, they didn't take the step from last year, did they? You know, Alex Marquez was on the podium at Repsol Honda, and and never really looked like being on the podium this year. Nakagami was on pole. He was he was in positions to get podiums. He wasn't too far off. He had, he had a few chances at fourth at Jerez, but it didn't happen again. And ultimately, as you say, it has to happen. You have to cross the line in that position. You know, you can only be close so many times before people say, well, you know, you have to make it. You have to actually do it now. And as you say, you look at Moto2, you look at Ayagura, and you think, well, look, there's a, there's a Japanese guy coming up through riding for Honda Team Asia. I mean, you know, the clock is ticking for Nakagami to get the results that, that that his speed suggests he can, you know, he's a, he is a podium guy. He's capable of pole positions, but he's, he's got to start delivering it. It's a big year for him this year. You got the feeling that 2023 world Superbikes might be full of a lot of MotoGP guys. <laughs> Wouldn't be uh, too shocked at that. Well, just capping off LCR Honda, it was a uh, Marquez ended in 16th in the standings and Nakagami 15th in the standings, but let's talk about the big team Repsol Honda fifth in the team's best result. Of course, those three wins uh, courtesy of Mark Marquez, Germany, USA and uh, the Emilia Romagna at Grand Prix. Also uh, Stefan Bradl taking a, a few rounds of that as well. Um, Espargro best result of second, but unfortunately with that big crash of Valencia to cap off the season, wasn't a brilliant way to end in a pole position earlier on, of course, in Silverstone stone highlight and Marquez I suppose it was all about the recovery at the start slowly getting better and better yes he was crashing all the time but he was getting back up and he was riding well and he got that first win in Germany and then is it the downfall after another crash a big crash in in a uh not even on on track in MotoGP but uh, you know while he was uh, uh testing so not not the best end for Marquez for what seemed like a really good sort of steady right way moving forward. 
this is the crux for Honda completely, isn't it? You know, Mark Marquez may never ride a motorbike, MotoGP bike again. Um, we just don't know. And I think the truth of it is they don't know. And they put all their eggs, Honda have put all their eggs in Mark Marquez's basket a few years ago. The development of the bike went the way it went. When the electronic rules changed, I think that wrong-footed Honda massively. They had probably one of the best electronics packages on a, on a motorcycle. Um, and they designed the the motor all around the control package that they'd got in the inertial platform and the ECU and so on. And I think what happened when they went to the spec ECU across all of the MotoGP bikes in agreement with the, the manufacturers in the end, Honda had to, to you know, toe the line. Um, that really had put Honda in a difficult position. Marquez could ride around it, but nobody else seemed to be able to. And that was the brilliance of Mar- Marquez. This eye injury that he has for the second time, when was it? Back in 2011 when he had it last time. Um, you know, can he recover from this? You know, we're all hoping he does because, I mean, MotoGP will be a lesser place without the great Mark Marquez. There's no doubt in my mind of that. There'll be a few people that disagree. Of course there will. But um, Mark Marquez is a brilliant motorcycle racer. And he's he's not a bad bloke at all. He's a professional, you know, he's a great guy, really. Good family. Good, you know, I, I, I can't, he's like... I think I've said it before on here. He's, he, he reminds me of the, the David Beckham of, of bike racing. And as much as there's people that actually take a swing at David Beckham, but what's not really to like, you know, he's an icon. He's, he's, he's good at, or he was good at what he did and, you know, so on and so forth. But Marquez not here in 2023. I tell you what, that would be an absolute disaster for Honda. That could put them back years. You know, it's going to be really tough to recover from from having no Mark Marquez in 2023. And yet I've got it in my heart. It feels like that's that could be a reality. We, we just don't know what's going on, do we? And this is this is the big worry at the moment. We don't know about the accident, for example. I mean, we haven't heard anything ha- since it happened, have we? Th- that's right. I mean, yeah. it was a tra- we know it was an enduro accident, a training accident. I think it was with a guy called Joseph Garcia, who's an enduro world champion. He's not slow. <laughs> and so if Mark was riding with him, I mean, he, he rides a bit like Mark, flat out. Um, now, but the problem is, what sort of an accident caused this injury? Because the worry is, I mean, you know, can it happen again? I mean, that's the big worry now, isn't it? Of course but, it of can. Of course. I mean, this, yeah, this, the, 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 yeah, I mean, we don't know how unusual, what I mean is we don't know how unusual this accident was or what the circumstances were, because was it just, an, a, you know, a bit of a tip off and suddenly you get an injury? Well, that could happen every time you fall off a major GP bike, couldn't it? So that's the big worry for me at the moment is, 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 is this going to be repeatable? I mean, what, what do the doctors say? We don't know. As I say, we don't even know the circumstances of the accident, how big an accident it was. It would almost be better if it was a, if it was a massive accident because it would be, ah, oh, okay, well, hopefully then, you know, he can avoid another massive accident and his eye will be okay. But It's like everything else though, Pete. Once you've weak, weakened it, you know, you're talking about an eye, for God's sake. I mean, it's, it's, can there be any more delicate unit on your body than an eye i mean it's it's just one of them things where i mean they are remarkable things but but it's so delicate in the way it's hooked up to the to the back of your bonds and so on and so forth i mean as you can tell by the way i'm talking about it i've got no clue but (laughs) it's it's one of those things where you know a mechanical injury like a bone like his arm you know yeah he's uncomfortable and it's taken him a long time to come back from the from that injury but it's bolted together and it looks pretty strong you can't do that with an eye you know the the stuff in the back of an eye is sort of you're talking, you know, fiber optic type technology. I don't know whether we even have the technology to fix that kind of stuff. And you're right. How big was the bang on the head? However big it was, the fact is, is that it's caused the same injury as he had previously. So you've got to reckon on that basis that it's going to take less of a clout to cause the same injury a third time is my rather basic theory. Um, And that's if he can come back. You know, if he's seen double vision, which apparently he has in both the cases, you know, okay, he might be able to live a normal life with that, but you you can't race 200 mile an hour motorbikes seeing double. It just doesn't work. So I think all we can do is at Christmas time, wish that man all the best, hope to see him fully fit come next year and hope he doesn't suffer from this injury into the rest of his life. I think the best case scenario, isn't it, if we if we go back to the 2011 accident, is he's probably going to miss testing. So either way, even if the best case scenario happens and he recovers at the same rate as he did last time, 
it's, he's doubtful he's going to make these tests. So he's going to go into the season. Honda are going to go into the season behind again. It puts them back. And, and you, you were talking about Marquez and riding the bike. And he, he was interesting when he came back this year, wasn't he? Because he, Mark sort of separates things. He'll say things about the parts of the bike like, well, it feels better, but it's slower. And I, I've never really heard riders say that, but he's able to pick what, what he regards as maybe parts that don't feel as good because he's able to go quicker on them. Whereas for most riders, if they feel good, they feel more confident, they go quicker. But I think that sort of seemed to be what Mark said about the bike that had been developed while he was away. It kind of felt better, but it wasn't as quick when you pushed it to the absolute edge as he did. And I think they don't have, you know, so they've got this split in, in what the riders are asking for, maybe. You know, Marquez just wants the fastest possible bike. The other riders want more controllability. Let's, so, let's give some context on that. A slower bike always feels easier to ride. A bike that's easier to ride generally is slower. The fact is, is that, you know, I have direct comparisons to make here. Don't laugh now. It was in black and white. It was a long time ago. I know, folks. When I got a factory ride for Suzuki, uh, the factory bike felt terrible. It felt awful. It would not do what my pre the production 500cc back in the day, Grand Prix bike that I had, that was an easy bike to ride. And I was fast on it. Then I get a factory bike which is fast and it is the most difficult motorbike to ride. And you have to find a way of making that. The reason why it's awkward to ride is because it's fast and it does things differently. And you've got to get around those situations. Mark Marquez can separate each zone of the bike. He, this is why he's so good at what he does and why Honda absolutely cherished him for as long as they, they have. He can make the difference. And, it's all very well getting on a fast factory bike, but sometimes, you know, Yamaha, when they finally get down to their their whatever they've got in the pipeline of production for next year, it might be a faster motorbike. They've been banging the drum about it being a faster motorbike. That doesn't mean it's going to be faster overall on the track in the hands of the people that are actually going to be riding it. It might be a more difficult motorbike to ride. As soon as you've got a bit more horsepower or it performs in a different kind of uh, place, if you like, the power is is different, both on, on off-throttle and on-throttle. I mean, it's, it works both ways. It's, it's a very, very complex situation. Once you move one part of the jigsaw puzzle, the old bloody picture changes. And and I think that, that we're going to see a bit of that next year anyway, but particularly with Honda, I think it's absolutely stark. Um, Marquez has the skill to be able to get around that stuff. His brother, I don't think, does. Polis Barbro... Uh, grits the t the screen and just rise the what's it's off the thing, and uh, you know Polis Bargro has perhaps can I say underperformed this year. I ex I expected more from Pol this year, um, just because he was the kind of rider I thought would be able to grab that Honda by the horns, um, but he hasn't really um, been able to do that consistently. Big loss, Mark Marquez. If uh, if he doesn't come back for testing. Honda are going to be at sea all year long and everyone else will be a year in front of them. I think, I think absolutely, as you say, Keith, Paul must have expected he would at least do as well as he did on the KTM when he moved to Repsol Honda. And he made clear, you, you join Repsol Honda, you joined to, to fight at the front of MotoGP. And then he just struggled with this rear grip problem, didn't he, all year? I guess the positive thing for Honda, if there is one, is this, this all-new bike seems to address that now, you know, and Paul seems to like it. So we need to see if it does give... The, the other riders, not Mark, the, what they're looking for here. And we just don't know what Mark really will think about it because he's not going to get the chance to test it. Well, he, he missed the Hareth test. When's he going to ride it again? It might not be until free practice at a Grand Prix. So we don't know what he'll exactly think of the finished product. Well, I think we will all echo Keith's sentiments. I think this Christmas we'll be crossing our fingers and, and wishing uh, Marquez the best recovery possible and a speedy recovery at that and hope that Honda can... Uh, come out fighting uh, next season um let's move on then we're into the top three now and the constructors and third suzuki 